with Jet Space Magazine, and joining me today on Queer Voices is one of my absolute favorite Seattle singer-songwriters, Whitney Monjay. Hi, Whitney. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, now, you're one of my favorite performers because you've gone from being a street musician to a bona fide recording artist, and um, it's almost like a fairy tale story as far as your career goes. Uh, how would you say that process has been for you? Um, well, it's been a very fascinating process. Um, you know, a lot of it started from trial and error, you know, not really knowing what was going to come of it and really just putting myself out there and just letting the universe kind of like figure things out for me. And, you know, I feel like that's kind of what it, my story is about is just putting myself out there and allowing things to come back to me. And so that's really what it is. And you're a really hard worker, too. Yeah. <laughs> I wake up, like, wanting to work. So, yeah, that does have a part in it, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Now, you're originally from Spokane. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Were you a musician back then, or until you, did you wait till you moved to Seattle? Um, well, I was, I was a musician. Like, growing up, I started playing music, and, um, but it really started with church, which most musicians kind of have that background, like church stories. And, uh, you know, I started playing guitar at 14, and, you know, I kind of just realized my passion from that performing on stage and watching people kind of, like, respond in this way that I didn't touch them in other way, like, in other parts of my life. So, um, and then from there, I moved here when I was, like, 20, and, you know, it's been, like, this really uh, fascinating ride. I never thought I was going to play music for a living, but, you know, here I am, 10 years later. <laughs> <laughs> so you almost feel a lot different now, 10 years after you moved here. Yeah. Uh, the gentrification is pretty insane. The whole city looks different than I, I mean, sometimes I look around, I'm driving around, I don't know where I am, you know, it just feels like a completely different town. But there's still, like, that Seattle feel about it, you know, there's those people that are weird and make it kind of vibrant, this, you know, kind of young, hip city, I still love it, and it's always going to be my home. fascinating thing for me because throughout this album creating my my new project you know I've been thinking about like where do I come from not just you know what's my hometown status what does that mean what is home you know but you know what's my background my, my mom my dad my grandparents you know my roots you know who am I really and so there's some questioning in that in, in my music and kind of that angst that I'm a little bit known for you know I have a lot of anxiety and I get it out in my music and uh, you know, I don't, I'm not necessarily, you know, talking about Spokane, and about Spokane <laughs> but, you know, there's definitely some hints of the hometown in there, you know, you'll see. You've described your style as alternative soul. Um, who's been the biggest influences on your musical style? Um, hmm, that's a pretty loaded question. Um, it is. I would say... You know, I've been super influenced by a lot of rock, rock and roll, honestly, you know, just there's something about the the losing of yourself that rock has to it. So I've always kind of idolized, you know, the rock and roll, like, way to fame. But I, I really also looked at other people that I super admire that are still playing music that aren't, you know decrepit from abusing <laughs> themselves or dead, which is one of those things that a lot of artists, you know, deal with. But I mean... The, uh, those people are what have taught me the balance of, of playing music, you know, you know, taking care of yourself, you know, making the right choices, being smart, working hard, you know, all of the things that create, you know, results and still that little edge of rock and roll music. So, you know, it's like I'm, it's an interesting thing, but I call it alternative soul because I feel like it's my connection to the Northwest rock scene and my roots, which is, you know, R&B and soul and blues, you know, essentially modern day blues artists, um, which that's my mom is a blues singer and that kind of stuff. So 
Like so you got some deep blues roots that Yeah. And I know you can let me go live. Oh, and this hand to me to something. No day you just let me go live. Sing this did me a thing. No, this did me a thing. And it sounds like you almost take a holistic approach to your music if you look at it as it encompasses an entire lifestyle not just a musical style yeah i yeah you know i really had to think about that you know like what is alternative soul you know for years i was trying to figure out what is my genre i never felt like i was soul music like aretha franklin or you know whatever people think blues ray charles or something you know but i i didn't ever think that my i always felt like i had this edge to me and i like i said i really was i listened to a lot of like male rock singers you know this like scream kind of thing which is where I have like this growl you know and you have my voice and yeah. because I used to try to emulate you know the like rock singers you know like Kurt Cobain or you know like these are the kinds of voices that I always thought like were really interesting and really grabbed with the heartstrings and so I just kind of like threw them together and that is me. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got a new EP coming out very soon. Yes yes I do. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Um, so my next EP, Stone, is coming out on January 16th, which is also my birthday, my 30th <laughs> birthday, turning 30, which is a big, big thing for me. I know a lot of people are like, you know, don't make such a big deal out of being 30, but it is for me. I feel like my 20s has been really cathartic because it is also when I started, you know, doing my music. So it's, it's kind of like a 10-year anniversary kind of deal. So it's a really special show. It's at the Triple Door. Um, my good friend Aaron Jones is going to be opening up solo. I mean, this guy, like, cannot miss him. He's, like, one of the best guitar players in Seattle. And um, he's been super encouraging to me. Uh, we, we might be playing a song that we wrote, so just... Oh, really? You have to come. It's you heard that. it here first. <laughs> Stone is one of the songs on your EP. Yeah. And that's a song that's been around for a little while, hasn't it? You know, I, a lot of these songs have been around for a while, actually. Stone is one of the newer ones. It's something that I have some live recordings. It's probably been about, it's been on my mind for about two or three years. I missed you by a long shot now. Well, I'm sad and I'm lonely in this cold town. Everybody's out low, someone new. I am just trying to forget about what I just blew. And it finally came to what it is now with this band that I have. Um, I have a really cool core group of guys that I've been playing with for about three years. And, and uh, it's been a really cool. Uh, you know, experience has brought this new kind of flavor to my stuff that, you know, even though I had been working on it for a few years, having them come on to this, make the song with me really brought it to life and kind of made it this new entity, so. Because you're used to working primarily as a solo artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I misspoke. I, it's actually been a couple, two years. I've been playing with Christian Liebig, the bass player, for a couple years, and then the drummer, um, William Bapp, and then Woody Frank on the guitar. And just really cool, laid back, chill people that you know make it really easy for me to kind of get the sounds that are in my head out you know I, I write a lot of the parts as far as like I have this idea you know but they bring so much of their own heart and passion to the music so um, it's kind of made it a little bit easier for me on stage <laughs> to do what I really love which is entertain and not be so much carrying the whole show on my shoulders what are some of the other songs on the album um, so one of my favorite songs um, that we recorded is actually the first track. It's called Chemical Reaction. And um, this too also kind of started developing a few years ago. And um, man, we just nailed it with the recording. It sounds so great. My mom came and sang on it and a few other great talented singers came and did some like backup vocals. And, um, you know, Floyd Reitzma from... Uh, Lithio, Studio Litho, he mixed it and made it sound amazing. Um, and I got a lot of help from Rachel Fields out of Studio Litho and Resonate, who, you know, just worked with me and really made my time creating their um, special. If my heart could be one color, could it be blue? Because that's how much I 
miss you if my soul could paint a picture would it be of you because that's how much I see you in my mind so that song I'm really looking forward to it's kind of a uh, it's intense yeah <laughs> yeah it's the first track I wanted to open with the bay, you know <laughs> yeah what was that like working with your mom pretty fun actually you know so I grew up with her being in bands all my life so it's cool to have the full circle yeah so we used to be in the corner little Whitney in the corner watching my mom you know be a rock star in Spokane and now I'm the rock star you know just to have her come to the studio was really a really special thing you know and she kept gave some good advice it was awesome it was special yeah this album was supported by a crowdfunding campaign yeah what was that process like um it was really fascinating so this is my third um crowdsourcing campaign that i've done i did one a few years ago for a music video and then uh one my f one of my first albums uh through kickstarter about five or six years ago and both were really successful and this one was also successful it was um, a learning experience. I, you know, did a lot of pre-research. I've been planning the Kickstarter for probably about uh, three to four months prior to launching it. That's good prep. I even worked around Mercury retrograde. So <laughs> gotta trust those stars, man. <laughs> Crowdfunding tips. It worked. <laughs> I got the goal. In fact, we oh, we went over the goal. We um, made eleven thousand dollars, just over eleven thousand dollars. When our original goal was eight. Nice. So uh, my fans, thank you so much. Like I'm, I, I'm still like I keep saying I'm in shock because it's it's crazy when that kind of support just pours out of people. I mean, I don't know how else. To, there's no words to really describe how amazing it is. You know. Yeah, I bet. I bet yeah. it feels amazing. It does. It does, and it shows. Like you know, I don't get a, a raise. I don't get you know, <laughs> a bonus for doing a good job. The only way I know I'm doing a good job is if you guys say so. So thank you. There ain't no for me to get out of here I said I gotta go I said I gotta go And I used to be a little girl But now I'm grown in a cold world I said I gotta go I said I gotta go Not to tokenize you, but you do represent a community that's underrepresented mm -hmm. on stage. Um, how how has how has that shown up in your work, and how has that impacted your career development? You know, it's kind of one of those things that's, you know, as with age, I've noticed um, the impact of where I stand in, on the societal food chain, as you will, you know, but. Um, you know, I, I've always been raised, you know, I have a black mother, so I have an uh, idea of, and she raised me, you know, like, to be strong and resilient. And so I kind of have this, you know, attitude that sometimes you work hard and it's not the worst thing in the world, you know. Sometimes you work hard and, and at the end of the day you get to say it's yours. And that to me is still, I hold on to that. That's what keeps me going instead of feeling, you know, like, why do I have to work as hard as hard, you know? I, I like, you know, that is a little bit difficult to, to maybe think of it that way, but I try not to let that, that kind of you know, thought process really hold me down because I, I don't think that does anybody really good thinking about, you know, I'm working hard on Fit, you know? And you have an outlet for it, too. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing is, like, music is one of those things. That it, it is a little bit sad that music is, um, you know, if I walk into a venue, let's say I'm in a place that is um, less diverse, I'm walking in, and before I play, I will maybe get treated differently. But when I play music, immediately there's, afterwards, you know, I'm treated like, Oh, you're you're a person. There's this connection, and that it is sad that it takes that, but also it's it's a blessing to know that music is strong enough, and creates that open. It, it opens people up, and so um, 
you know, I'm, I feel privileged to have that gift and to be able to share it with others. Even when it seems like a little bit unfair, I also realize that sometimes it's really not for them. It's for me. So, yeah, no, yeah, well, and I think you are a stupendously and genuinely talented performer and person. And I think you deserve every ounce of success that you get and more. Thank you. Yeah. So that was our conversation with Whitney Manger. Uh, you can catch her live on stage on January 16th at the Triple Door for the release party for her new, uh, new EP, Stone. Don't miss it. And thanks for joining us today on Queer Voices. I'm Robert Roth for Jet Space Magazine. We'll see you next time.